word. We ain't done it in a long time. Let's do it again. Let's act like we ain't done it in about 92 years. Right? Everybody ready? Hold your Bible in your right hand. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can be what it says I can be. This is my Bible. It is God's word, God's holy word, God's written word, God's spoken word, God's living word. This is my Bible. I will love it. I will treasure it. I will cherish it. I will obey it. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis chapter 12 is our text for the morning. If you uh, have time, I would encourage you to um, pull up 8 o'clock of worship later this week and watch, uh, listen uh, to that piece, worship with us again online, saints and friends. But this morning, I want to read three verses from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And then please remind me to um, say uh, a word about an announcement before we do the benediction. When you got Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3, say, I got it. I'm going to read it to you this morning. Hold on. I always say this, right? I always do this. And I say, let me get it. Let me get it. Here we go. I'm going to read to you this morning. I know this is old school for some of us. Uh, from the King James Version. Oh, my goodness. Somebody say, what is that, Reverend? It's the, it's the old school version, the King James Version. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody ready? Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, or to a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt, what? Be a blessing. And I will bless them that what? And I will curse them that what? And in thee, here we go. And in thee, here we go. And in thee, here we go. Shall all families of the earth be blessed. God bless you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, hearts are humbled, spirits are lifted, Christians are praying. Be pleased to Heavenly Father again to let us preach, God, not for shape, nor for show, nor for fashion. But God, let us preach till we reach each day. God, we thank you and we praise you for your love, mercy, and grace. And God, I ask now that you would please remove every distraction. Forgive me, Father, of all my sins, us, of all of our sins, our trespasses, our transgressions, our iniquities, and our debts. Father, remove every distraction that would seek to steal the seed of your word from us today and that your will be done in our lives. We are so grateful, God. We are so glad to have you as our sovereign Savior, as our living Lord and liberator. Now, God, bless us. Save, heal, strengthen, deliver, set free as you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. The year is 1957. I know it's uh, older than most of you have been alive. But it's 1957. Hollywood, also known as Holly Weird, puts out a movie that is monumental. No, it is major. Because it deals with, watch this now, moving from clamor and confusion to that which is clear and has clarity. The movie, 1957, here's the title, The Three Faces of Eve. Eve and this movie with the same title, watch this now, was written in part by professional persons who deal in the area of psychotherapy, psychology, and with a touch, of course, and a tinge of sociology. I love those words, psychology and psychiatry, and I love the word sociology. We know that the suffix ology is always the study of. So then psychology is the study of the psyche. And sociology is the study of society. In this 1957 movie, here we go, The Three Faces of Eve, these professional persons who deal with the challenges and the changes 
the vicissitudes of life that all of us go through, write what is argued to be in part, if not in whole, this movie, but hold it, based on the life of a real woman that really lived and existed. Maybe not from Chicago, but a real woman who really lived and existed. Maybe not from Minnesota, but a real woman who really lived and existed. Maybe not from North Carolina, but a real woman who really lived and really existed. Maybe not from Clear Lake, but a real woman who was dealing with what professionals called in that time frame dissociative disorder. You may not have seen the movie. If you've ever seen it or heard of it or read the book, just wave your hand in the air. Just come on, wave it like you've shown up. Okay, I see you. Eve is a woman who is dealing with confusion. Her, her confusion comes in this way. She has not one personality, no, not two personalities, but the name of the movie is The Three Faces of Eve. As she goes through the changes in her life and the routines of daily living, it only takes a small thing to trigger a trauma in her, and then she switches almost like you and I would flip a switch on a device. She moves from Eve, I'm making this name up now, to Alicia. And then from Alicia to Secretia. <laughs> because the trauma moves her into multiple personalities. This is Nisi, Chairman Neely, Deacon Patterson. I wonder if any of us this morning can connect with trauma that is so jarring, with challenges that are so life absorbing that we move almost to an out-of-body experience plane where we're looking down on ourselves and asking ourselves who ourselves be. Contextually, whenever we attempt to declare God's word, we always attempt to declare it in context. Everybody say context. The word context is a compound word, C-O-N, con, T-E-X-T, uh, the suffix, C-O-N, watch this now, saying, in every case, whenever you see it, it always means same, C-O-N. And text, T-E-X-E-R-E, -E, is the original Latin text ear, where we get our word what? Texture from, our fabric, that which is what? Woven together. <laughs> Don't you love words? I know I do. So context, watch this now. Contextually speaking, in my Bible, you tell me if it's true in yours, does chapter 11 come before chapter 12 in Genesis in your Bible? Pastor, why do you ask that? Because I have to go to chapter 11 to set up the context for chapter 12. Before Abram, watch this now, receives clarity and receives um, clear vision from God, there is confusion. I ask the question one more time. Anybody here ever going from confusion to clarity? Maybe the better question is anybody ever going from clarity <laughs> to confusion? North Carolina, here we go, watch this, watch this, watch this. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, the book of first things, watch what happens now in this book, that after God creates the heavens and the earth, after God creates Adam and Eve, after God creates, as it were, through the loins of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, on and on it goes, can you all imagine that there is a flood that takes place after the flood of Noah? We all know about that Noahic flood. We know about that experience do you remember that the Bible declares after the flood of Noah, watch this now, that men began to multiply on the earth, watch this now, and then the Bible says they came to one place and one point in their mind and they decided that they wanted to dethrone God. Imagine the chaos, the confusion, the craziness of that, except we want to do it too. We may not say it that way, but all of us have a sense of wanting to be large and in charge. We want to be the head person. Did you see me catch it? We want to see, be the head person in what? Charge. They build a tower, context, and they say we're going to build this tower, Reverend Pierre Singfield, and we're going to make it go all the way up to heaven. What's your point? We want to kick God out of heaven and take over. The arrogance, the audaciousness, the unmitigated gall, the gumption, the gusto, the insanity of humanity <laughs> to try and dethrone God. You say, Pastor, I would never do that. Oh, we do it every day. 
in our relationships where we fight man and woman and woman and man, and I'm in charge, no, I'm in charge, no, God said this, no, God said that. In a very real sense, we may be making the same mistake they made here in Genesis where all of us want to be number one, numero uno. We want to be the boss. Leave me alone. In my mind, why do I hear Jigga and his wife? <laughs> Ain't nothing to it. Let me just quote it. Real one. Ain't nothing to it. What's the next word? Boss. We want to be. God is so upset with the singleness of mind with which man decides to sin. Back up, say it again, Sherman. The singleness of mind with which man decides to sin. We can't agree to get along, but we can agree we're going to go after God. Because from Genesis, uh, watch this now, they wanted to be God. That was the argument and the temptation of the devil in the garden. Listen, if you partake of this fruit, your eyes will be open and you will be like, come on now, God. <laughs> they're building a tower. Can y'all see him? And they're saying, hand me another brick, hand me another brick. Hand me. And the tower's getting higher and higher and higher. And the Bible says that God looked down and this is what he did. He confused the languages, three faces of evil. So while all of humanity was speaking one language, all of a sudden now, they're speaking different languages. And I just told you to hand me another brick, but now you're speaking French, and I'm speaking Japanese. And the Japanese person who's speaking Japanese is now talking to someone else who is speaking a native language. And then the one speaking a native language is talking to someone from the Congo. I'm making up these places because we already know in our study of God's word in this church that the Pangea. Uh, I'll leave that alone, Sherman. You're going to add to the sermon. But the world was all connected. The earth was all connected. The pan, Gia, pan, all. Gia, the world landmass at the creation moment was all one landmass with what we call Africa right in the middle. Don't get mad. It's just on the Pangea. Confusion is going on. Words are being passed by. What do you mean, hand me another brick? This one can't understand that one. That can't, one can't understand the other one. And the Bible says they begin to gather right there at that moment, which is why the tower was never finished. <laughs> and they started gathering together with people who spoke the same language, that they, this new tongue that they had. And then they dispersed over the earth, and now we have what we have. Now, don't, don't miss the main thing with all of that. Here's the main thing that when we have one voice and one mind and one heart, it should be facing up toward God. But we can mess up the best thing we've ever got with God by trying to do more than what God told us to do with what he's given us to do it with. <laughs> anybody here ever, I, I've raised this question before at this church, uh, anybody here ever, ever, ever been 10, 12 years old? 15, <laughs> 7, 6, 5? You ever remember playing that game again on the playground called King of the Hill? And I see all the boys that know that. That's why Deacon Boyd just said, oh, yeah. Deacon Boyd said it so loud, he was one of the kings of the hill. And, and so the boys would stand on top of a hill, and whatever other boys could knock them down, then they became the king of the hill. We all want to be kings, and we all want to be woman kings. Confusion. God confounds the languages, they split, they separate, they move from, watch it, calamity, watch it, chaos, watch it, confusion, watch it, split personalities, watch it, incommunicado to Genesis 12. Now I'm at the text. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses, I said to Abraham, get thee out of there, thy father's house and from thy kindred and from thy kinfolk and you're going to go to a land that I'm going to show you. Here's the question, how do you move from confusion to clarity? How do you go from fuzzy to vision? How do you move from being ordinary or on the lower, lighter, lesser level to the higher, holier, healthier level? How do you go from being vicious to being a victor? Here's the answer. Are y'all ready? I hope you're glad you came to church today. In, in, in Genesis chapter 12, 
remember, 8 o'clock was the Advent sermon, but now, watch this. The Bible says this, and I just want to, I just want to share with you, and, and, and this, is the, this is all it takes. I won't even be long. I, I really won't be long. And the Lord spoke, watch this now, said to Abraham, get out. <laughs> is that what it says in your Bible? Just 12, 1. And the Lord said to, really not even Abraham yet, but Abram, get thee out of thy father's house and thy country and thy kindred to a land I'm going to show you. Kathleen, sometimes we need to leave where we are to get vision for where we're headed. <laughs> now, you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can do with that what you want, but sometimes God can't even get through to you because you're in a place, a location, and a locale that is so comfortable, that is so sweet, that is so accommodating, that he can't even get to you. You're, con you're, 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 you're surrounded by yes people. Who, who here has, has children? Just raise your hand. I know I can hear them in the back. The other kids. But any, listen, um, did some of you ever regret that you gave your children too much too soon? <laughs> you better be glad they're in the back now. They, I mean, you, 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 you ever regret it <laughs> that you gave them, <laughs> Sister Jackson, too much too soon, and they become what? Comfortable. <laughs> Spoiled how? Rotten. To the core. And the Lord, Reverend Corey Jocelyn, says to Abram, get out. The Bible tells us this historically, that Abram's father, watch this now, Terah. Everybody say Terah. Everybody say Terah. Terah, Abram's dad, was rich. He was wealthy. He was doing good. I mean, he was living on top of the hill. Historians extant from the scriptures say that Terah, watch this now, and inside, say, say this, that he was so well off. One of the businesses he had was he was a shop owner, and he sold trinkets, and those trinkets included other gods. That is to say, uh, you could go to his shop and get, get the little miniature of the god of so-and-so and the god of such-and-such. Because Abram lived in a polytheistic society. I, a society, I know you're saying, Pastor, what does that have to do with me? We all live in a polytheistic society. Poly, what is that? One, how many? What is theistic? It's from the root theism. What is that? God. People have many beliefs. Am I alone? Uh, 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 everything is popping up now. Everybody just, folks are creating new religions online every day. I, I got a new one. It's, it's called Re. I got another one called Le. Another, another one called John. I got another one called Up. I got another one called Down. I woke up this morning. I had a dream last night. Uh, <laughs> and I got a new religion. We just as confused. That's my girl and the three faces of each. Some of us got the 99 faces of John and the 100 faces of Jim and the 200 faces of Jessica. So in Genesis 12, or in, I keep saying that, Genesis 12, the Lord says to Abram, get out. His father is so rich and so wealthy that the Bible says that Abram is in a location, in a locale where he's comfortable. He's married to a woman named Sarai. Everybody say Sarai. S-A-R-A-I. His name is A-B-R-A-M. God gives him this word, and then look at it. The Bible says, get thee out of thy country. Watch it. Out of thy father's house. Watch it. To a land that I'm going to show you. Some of us will never experience clarity and always experience confusion until we get up and go. He says, go from your country, your people, your father's house to the land I will show you. Now, here's our problem, is that we never want to get where God wants to take us until we know where, where our destination is prior to taking a step. God, in the beginning, does not do this with Abram. He says, Abram, just get up and start walking. Literally. Abram said, where am I going? He said, just start walking. I'll tell you when to stop. Wake up Sarai, tell her, let's go, and let's leave. Can y'all imagine the conversation between Abram when he, when, he, when he rolls over and says, baby, wake up. What's up, Abe? It ain't time for breakfast yet. The maid service hasn't come in, have come in and knocked on our door, and, and everything's fine. Everything's good. What, what, what's up? Uh, God uh, uh, said to me in a dream just now, we, you and I need to move. Abram, which, which God? Remember polytheism. Which God said it? 
because they live in not only the polytheistic society, but if history is right, watch this now, then uh, Abram's father uh, sells miniatures of various gods. And Abram said, now, baby, now, nah, that's where we've been wrong. There's not many gods. They don't want. And, and, and how many of you know that when God speaks to you, you know it's him and not another? Anybody here know that? Yeah, when you have a dream from God, anybody know it's God and it's not another? And he says, come on, let's go. Can you imagine what that conversation was like? It's not recorded in scripture, but I think Sarai had some things to say. <laughs> I think she may have said, no, I don't know. You can go if you want to. <laughs> she may have said this. This is just conjecture now. But I'm staying right here where, the, where, where everything is comfortable, it's cool, I got AC, I got everything I need. Uh, Dad is, is, is doing the doggone thing. We got service, we got all this and that. And then where we going, you don't know. You want us just to pack up and start walking. Yeah, it's called F-A-I-T-H, forward action in trusting him. And you can't say you have faith and never take a step. Preach, sir. So what happens in this passage is that. Now watch what God says in the passage after he uh, says, Abram, you got a problem. The problem is you're too comfortable. And in order for you to become who I want you to be, you must be made uncomfortable. Now get up and let's start walking. And I need to teach you what faith is. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Where are we going? I'll tell you when you arrive. Just start walking. Watch what happens here. <laughs> you know, I love hearing the kids. Do y'all love that? I love y'all. Don't love it, but I love it because why? Because I ain't heard them in about 92,000 years. I love hearing the kids in the back. Here we go. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. Last verse. Y'all don't think I'm almost done? I'm almost done. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples (plural) on the earth will be blessed through you. Now, I don't know if you caught it. I'm done. Seven minutes. I'll be done before, before noon. Somebody at our church is saying, we will believe it. <laughs> when we were. When we said, watch this now. He said, faith, I will make you into a great nation. Now, watch what happens. In order for us to move from confusion to clarity, we must listen to God. We must lean on God. We must follow him even when we cannot see where we're going. But watch the promise. I will make you a great nation. Watch the wording. I will make you a great nation, Abram. I'm going to make you, Abram, singularity, Abram, great nation, multiple. Because you don't have a nation with one. Now watch the next line. And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and uh, whoever curses you, I will curse, and all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. Abram gets up after some conversation, I imagine, over coffee or something else with Sarai. They leave. Abram's daddy says, where are you going? I don't know. God told me to go. Which God? And they just start walking. Now, I know it's Christmas time. Y'all won't remember this. You're too young. There's a show that used to come on every Christmas with a heat miser. <laughs> and they used to talk about put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking across the floor. That's the first part. See, that's why y'all don't remember. And then the last clause is put one foot in front of the other, and then you'll be walking out the door. Could it be that you've not experienced what you need to experience in God because you never put one foot in front of the other. They are traveling. They're on their way. Now watch what happens here. He says, I'm, I'm going to make you a great nation. How does God do that? Here's how he does it. He does it through genealogy. What do you mean? Multiplication. Not addition. Multiplication. What do you mean? He goes into Sarai. Hold it. I didn't tell you that God changes Abram's name to Abraham and Sarai's name to Sarah. And he says, I'm going to give you a seed. And Abram says, well, you know what age we are. This is in your Bible. I'm not even going further now. I won't go further in reading. He says, now, you know, we've been trying our whole lives, and we ain't had no child yet. And then what does God say to Abram late, Abraham later? Is anything too 
hard for God? You talking about getting pregnant? Boy, I created the world. What do you? I'm God. I'm Elohim. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm Jehovah Sidkenu. I am Jehovah Shalom. I am God who is very God. What are you talking about? She ain't pregnant. I can handle that without your assistance. <laughs> what do you need God to do that's supernatural and that's miraculous that you can't do on your own? You name it, he'll do it if we have faith and we follow him without fear. Mm. So Abram follows. I'm trying to stop. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to try to make y'all fibbers this morning. I got nine minutes now. And he says this. He says, here's what I'm going to do. I need you to travel. I need you to walk with Sarah. Change your name. Why? Because Abram doesn't mean what Abraham means. Abraham means father of many nations. Of, of many nations. <laughs> and Sarai, no, Sarah. I'm going to bless the entire planet through your seed. Y'all know the rest of the story. The Bible says that it's, it's, it's 25 years or more after the promise that Isaac shows up. I hear you asking the question, Pastor, who is Isaac? Well, Isaac is the son of Abraham. And so I won't go into the backstory and the drama of how they tried to intercede and help God. And then they had, they had another woman in the house. They had another baby. You got, you got, you got can I say this, children? Come you got sex over here, then sex over there. And then the wife has co-signed it. It's the real housewives of Ur. <laughs> Ur of the Chaldees. They're just flipping and flopping and switching. And, 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 and God said, Abe, hey, didn't I tell you I'm going to do it through you? And the reason why I'm waiting 25 years is because your faith needs to grow. Could it be we're not moving from uh, confusion to clarity because we don't have an, enough faith? And God said, Sherman, I'm going to help you, but son, you got to grow some more. God, what do you mean? I mean, you're not where you need to be. So the reason why I still have you where you are is because your faith needs to catch up with your future. And you're stuck where you are because you refuse to believe me for going forward. You know the rest of the story. And I know why you're not shouting. I'm done now. I'm really going to be done. It's 11.53. There ain't no way I'm not going to be done before noon. I'm going to be done in three minutes. If you shout. <laughs> Somebody going to start shouting. Now, Reverend, I'm ready. Come on. I knew they was going to do that. I knew they was going to do that. Yeah, see, now, watch this. See, they just added 60 seconds on to the song because of that. Here's what happens, Sister Nellie Watson, is that God blesses them because of their obedience. But here's what this has to do with both Advent and Christ. When he says, I'm going to bless the entire world, that's the translation. The entire earth, that's the translation. All of Israel, that's the translation. All of humanity, that's the translation. Through your obedience. Wow. God does it in his own time. He waits because Abram or Abraham and Sarai or Sarah are not yet mature enough to handle it. And it could be that your blessing, your benefit, your miracle has not come because you're not ready to receive it. Put down the computer and pick up your Bible. Get off Facebook and get your face in the book. Get off Instagram and quit looking for that which is instant. Because God works out what he does in his own time. And he does it according to our own what? M-A-T-U-R-I-T-Y. What I think. M-A-T-U-R-I-T-Y. M-A-T-U-R-I-T-Y. That's for maturity. Y'all pray for me, okay? <laughs> Where's the queen at? Where's the, where's the queen? I know why you're not shouting. Our whole church now, guess, they all know I'm closing now. As soon as I say the next line, they're going to know I'm closing. They, those of you who are guests won't know it. You're gonna, they're going to know I'm closing when I say this. You're not shouting because I left Eve. Do y'all know I'm closing now? She's in a state of confusion and chaos, and it's crazy. 
until a cure is found. In some cases, the cure comes instantaneously. And in other cases, the cure comes over time. I don't know who you are, where you're at, where you're living, or how you're living, but here's the real deal. Whatever it is you're going through that's causing you to be so crazy that you want to build a tower and dethrone God out of your life, <laughs> you better get some clarity today. Because God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should. He has a plan for your life and mine, and it includes the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and his word, and being part of a Bible-believing, sin-hating, so one in church, admitting that you and I and all of us are sinners saved by what? Grace. And a fresh commitment to follow him every day of our lives. I ain't got no big clothes. I just want to tell you that when he said, I'm going to save you, I'm going to use um, all the through you all the nations of the world shall be blessed. This is really why you're not shouting. This is really the connection between uh, what we're talking about, uh, Advent and Christmas. You forgot that Abraham begat Isaac <laughs> and Isaac begat Jacob. And when you read Matthew chapter 1, we have the genealogical line that starts at Adam, preach sermon, and it ends at Joseph and Mary, preach sermon. <laughs> and so what God does is he blesses the whole world through the loins of Abraham and Sarah. And he gives us a son. You're not shouting yet. His name is not Isaac. He gives us a savior. You're not shouting yet. His name is not Jacob. He gives us Jesus Christ. He gives us the rose of Sharon. Preach Sherman. He gives us the lily of the valley. Preach Sherman. He gives us the bright and morning star. Preach Sherman. He gives us the bridge over troubled water. Preach Sherman. He gives us water in dry places. Preach Sherman. He gives us bread in the starving land. He gives us everything we need for life and godliness. And he does it through his son, Jesus Christ. Let me close with a hymn. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me what? whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus all oh, precious is the flow that makes us white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus father we thank you for your son the Christ and for your Holy Spirit and God as men and women stand in this sanctuary we thank you that you can do anything but fail God we thank you for all of your blessings in Jesus name